Some people say, live with no regrets, but I say, embrace your regrets and make the best out of them. They will teach you how to be a better person. How many of you have instantly regretted an action right after you did it? Hello, I'm Ellen Cusker, and I believe our memories make us who we are, and we don't want them to be full of regrets because of bad decisions. We should live every day to the fullest and live our lives without regret through making good choices. Most of you probably know what regret is. Maybe you think it's a huge, scary thing that comes with enormous mistakes, but regret is simple and can be quite small. Regret is a feeling that makes you angry and disappointed in yourself, and in my case, also makes you feel dumb and guilty. I haven't committed any major crimes or shied away from amazing opportunities, so I don't have any of those mega regrets, but I certainly have had some small ones. For example, I often wonder what would have happened if I had said this, if I hadn't given up on that, if I had made one decision a different way, if I had said yes just one more time, or in one particular case, if I had followed that one rule and not crossed the line I knew I should have steered clear of. Each of these small experiences of regret has encouraged me to have a better tomorrow, and they can do the same for you. I like to take risks, but in my 14 years, I have learned that I need to consider the possible outcomes before I act. This past summer, I went to Tahoe with four of my close friends. The summer before our eighth grade year was coming to an end, and we got to have a little mini vacation before our summer camp started. We all thought it would be so much fun to ride around in our, in our golf cart on one of our last summer nights before eighth grade, driving wherever we wanted. And it was fun, until it wasn't. We were having the time of our lives, cruising to music and laughing uncontrollably. Driving the golf cart gave us a sense of responsibility and power, and we took this adrenaline rush way too far. We decided to drive on the grassy hills of the golf course instead of staying on the paved paths. A grumpy man yelled at us to get off the course. Frightened, we swerved off the course as fast as we could, not even thinking about whether the wheels of the golf cart had torn up the lush green course. About two hours later, when it was pitch black and our only light was the stars, we pulled into my driveway. As we drove up to the house, all the blood in my veins turned to ice. We saw car lights and realized they belonged to a golf course security guard. He got out and asked us if we were the girls who were swerving around on the course, and unfortunately, we were. We all panicked while he questioned us. I've never experienced that bony fear of getting in that much trouble and how severe the consequences might be. Along with the fear, I grew disappointed in myself and regretted my careless actions. I knew that if we had used our best or really just our mediocre judgment and made the right choice, we would not be in this mess. After the guard left, we made the cowardly choice to never bring it up to our parents. We went inside the house, didn't say a word, and went on with our nights. The next day, we went to sleepaway camp we had been waiting for all year. We drove together from my house to camp, and when we got there, we were all so relieved that nothing had happened with the golf cart situation. We thought we were home free. In hindsight, I should have trusted my senses of regret and disappointment, not that illusory freedom. Of course, our parents eventually found out. While we were settling in and reuniting with our camp friends in our cabin, one of us got called into the office. At first, we assumed it was something about her camp forms, but soon we learned that by being irresponsible with the golf cart, we potentially had caused costly damage to the golf course, and all of our parents were furious. We also learned that we might have to pay thousands of dollars each to repair the damage we had all caused. Hearing that my parents found out made me feel incredibly guilty because I knew I had betrayed their trust. I was disappointed in myself because I knew I had lost many of my privileges. The next few days at camp were filled with worry and regret. We couldn't stop stressing over what would happen when we returned and how we would pay for it. We replayed that night and then all of the mistakes we had made over and over again in our minds. We agreed that this is the dumbest mistake any of us had ever made, and we all knew our parents in the golf course deserved an apology, and we all accepted that we deserved the consequences waiting for us at home. Because we were stressing over our regrets, our week at camp was not as fun as it could have been. I didn't enjoy myself as much as I had in the years past. Thankfully, after a few days, the golf course had inspected the damage more, and we got letters from our parents saying we didn't owe any money after all. Of course, this was a huge relief, but we still knew we had made a mistake, and I felt awful that I had put my parents and my friends' parents through so much trouble. Although it had all worked out, I still knew that what we did was wrong, and that it would be hard for me to regain my parents' trust, which was my biggest regret. We all like to think of ourselves as good people, but as Paul said in his letter to the Corinthians, when you think you're standing firm, you might fall. You're tempted in the same way all other human beings are. We want to be good people, and sometimes we also want to break the rules. When we give in to that temptation, it can lead to regret, which is a truly unpleasant feeling that can ruin even the most fun occasions, like an amazing summer camp with good friends. So, when you're tempted, try to stand firm, and if you give in, God will help you deal with it, which means letting the regret to a hard lesson so you won't make the same mistakes. 
Sometimes people yell YOLO when they're about to do something stupid, but I believe living every day to the fullest doesn't mean making, taking careless risks or making impulsive decisions. It means making decisions so you can live without regrets. It's important to know when to say yes and when to say no. The thrill of the moment convinces me to say yes, but in the future, I know to think about my consequences. Now, when I'm faced with a decision that can lead me to regretting something, I think about the outcome because I know that at the moment, something may seem okay, but afterward, I will want to go back and make a different choice. We have to remember there are boundaries we should not cross. So, join me in living your life to the fullest by making good decisions, not reckless ones. Thank you.